So I can't believe how fast the time flies, but it's been a year since I first hauled in my hands Sony A7R5, which is kind of the first of its kind in the Sony ecosystem, bringing the AI unit, bringing the new sort of design with the screen. And like I, I shot a bunch of stuff pre-release as a Sony ambassador, wedding photographer, then I've shot a bunch of weddings with it. Actually, I switched to these cameras from A7IVs that I was using last year this year every wedding that i've shot was with a7r5 and in today's video i'm gonna take you down the memory lane i'm gonna show you some photos some actually paid photos that i shot with it and my impressions after using them for a full year first of all if you're interested in sony stuff cameras lenses gear and wedding photography make sure to subscribe to the channel because all of my videos are about this but yeah today's video i'm gonna break down these cameras in terms of first of all like the overall design and handling and how did it feel how did they survive a year with magic shooting them then i'm going to talk about the dynamic range the out of focus system in a real life scenario and the iso performance so starting with the design and the overall feel of these cameras after switching from a7 IVs, like something for sure that you will feel is that these cameras are heavier are heavier are like kind of like a different build in terms of they 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 feel like more okay more than less like a7 IVs were like rather light and although the materials were similar i i for sure feel that a7 r5 has a superior build to a7 IV. so that's kind of a minor difference but i did feel it and you know i did feel it on my arms holding two cameras like on every single wedding day for at least 10 hours so yeah it is quite painful that the cameras are heavier than lighter but what I did enjoy a lot about these cameras is the new screen system so I could finally use like in the both ways I could both tilt it and flip it and I do hope that Sony will incorporate this system in more of the cameras for now it's only a7r5 that has it which is crazy so hopefully we're gonna see that in more cameras coming later another happy addition after coming from a7 IV is the viewfinder that has like way better quality but there's some like interesting fact when using the viewfinder in real scenario so every single time I'm half pressing to focus and to track a subject the quality of the screen degrades um, um, I think that has to do something with being able to show the tracking faster because on a7 IV sometimes I was tracking and the little green box was kind of not exactly in the eye was like kind of um, lagging I would say so this doesn't happen here on a7 r5 but what happens is that quality degrades and it degrades even more if you are in APS-C mode so in APS-C mode when I half press the quality is just crazy bad and I, I don't know why is that I, I gave my feedback to Sony and that's 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 all I can do with it but overall reviewing the images on both screen and viewfinder are way superior in this camera and after using them for a year mostly on dual straps so cameras just dangling on my arms on every single job and I am not like the most you know caretaking person in terms of like you know putting the camera down all the time in the bags and so on I, I put it on the grass I put it on the pavement I put it everywhere and it does not have many scratches like both of these cameras are look kind of brand new with just tiny scratches on the corners and that's that's actually it I do feel that it's less scratched than all my previous cameras that I had and now let's look at the photos so so first of all if you're getting a7 r5s you kind of getting it because you want to use those megapixels so 61 megapixels it's a crazy number and you know ability to shoot it with lenses like 51 2 and have this super shallow depth of field but like insanely insanely sharp image is a amazing benefit of these cameras so here's one and the, like the one more sample like look how many details you have shooting with 61 megapixel so for me i did upgrade it for these cameras so i can use both 61 megapixels so, so a full raw and a medium raw which is 26 megapixels and what i actually do is when i'm testing a lenses what i what i do often for this channel i get 
lenses from Sony, I get lenses from other brands and I test them for sharpness, I do want to use that 61 megapixels. So like in this image, I have a 51 4G master uh, like pre-release and I was just checking out how sharp it is and it, it's insanely sharp. And being able to test it in 61 megapixels is crazy. Just look at these drops of rain around. It's just insane. Here's one more. Look at these hair, the glorious hair. And yeah, so 61 megapixels, very beneficial official for that and then if you mix your let's say wedding work with a studio work with a commercial work and you do need those megapixels this camera is just a monster because it does combine megapixels with performance which i'm going to talk about in a second but for wedding work for my just regular weddings for my clients 61 megapixels in my opinion it's an overkill. So if I wouldn't need those 61 megapixels, I I would be probably very happy with a7 IV. I do still think that a7 IV is just a better fit for most wedding photographers. So unless you need those upgrades in terms of the body build, the screen and so on, uh, like a7 IV could be just a better choice. But for my needs, I do use actually both 61 megapixels and those 26 megapixels in medium rows. And the way I actually use it is that here's from actual wedding scenarios. The first look is a beautiful moment. I have two cameras. On one of my cameras, I have a 35 millimeter F1 4G master. On a second lens, I have a 51 2G master and I'm shooting medium rows. So you can actually see here on the left the dimensions of the files are like 6240 pixels on the longer edge uh, so this is a shot with 35 this is from a second uh, lens so a 50 g master so a 51 2 but look at the next picture this one i shot it after pressing the button which i have customly set to aps-c mode and when i click it it just zooms in to an APS-C mode, but an APS-C mode also gives me 26 megapixels in this camera. So now the camera is using just a part of the sensor, just the middle part of the sensor, extending my reach. So that 50 millimeters becomes a 75 millimeters, but still giving me exactly the same dimensions. So this is something that I use very often. I get like actually four different angles when I'm shooting with just two primes, I often end up having a 24G master on a one camera and a 50G master on a second one. And with ability of turning them both to APS-C mode, I'm kind of shooting 24, 35, 50, and a 75 with just two lenses. And all of the files are exactly the same dimensions, 26 megapixels, which is enough for me in terms of the wedding work. I wish it was a 30 megapixels, it's 26. Hopefully in the future we'll see even more. And there are obviously situations that I want to use a full 61 megapixels. So like this shot, for example, it's a group shot. The group is quite far away. I'm doing this kind of epic angle. So the second thing I have set on my camera customly is on the dial mode three. I have it set to full raw mode. So whenever I want to use a full 61 megapixels, I just switch to my mode three and shoot a picture like this when I can just crazy zoom in and just see all these faces and details if I want. So for group shots from a specific portrait and for testing purposes, I do use 61 megapixels. For majority of the weddings, I will use 26 megapixels. Let's move to the dynamic range because this is something that is, in my opinion, extraordinary with Sony a7R5. I do often shoot you know, under circumstances that are not under my control, meaning I have to shoot portraits at 2 p.m. at 1 p.m. when the light is crazy, or I have a ceremony that is just in a crazy bright scenario and I'm like struggling, to be honest. So actually this wedding, I'm gonna start with this one picture. I'm gonna reset it so you can actually see uh, like how bad were the conditions. Look, look at this. Like I'm backlit, so they're in the shadows. So my goal here was expose, so I don't blow too much highlights, but I was also trying not to underexpose too much because I didn't want to have noise in the shadows. So this is like my exposure and look, we, we can do with it. I can go down with the exposure, having a full sky in the image. And also I can just go up 
and have their faces perfectly lit. You know, the haze and the light is, is making the image slightly hazy, but either way I can just get away with this and have really good image having both shadows and the highlights. I, I did turn this one into black and white because like I prefer the look of black and white. Here I didn't want the too much HDR-ish look, but there's like so many more situations. This is exactly the same wedding, exactly the same situation. So other than like the sun that is like behind them, like you can see the blue sky around, you can see their faces, you can see everything and look again how the raw image looked. So dynamic range is amazing. This is one more photo from this wedding. So I'm going to reset it so you can see it was underexposed. So I underexposed it because like in this particular case, I was going for like this kind of silhouette look. I wanted to have the sky, like every single detail in the sky, because I did want it to bring it back in post. And this is the final image, which I'm insanely happy with that I can see their faces. I can see all the details in the sky as well. And there's just like so many examples that the dynamic range was very helpful. Like, you know, simple images like this, that I'd have a sky in that image. You can see it up here. And with today's tools, you can bring that sky really easily. The way I actually did it here, I edited this picture with my Magic Dabra preset. And with my preset, I also have tools to just like with one click bring back everything from the sky so you can see once again i'm gonna add my preset i'm gonna slightly go down with the exposure and then i have this dark clouds preset that just darkens the sky and i can just change the amount of how dark is the sky in the background here with the simple slider uh, if you want to get the presets, make sure to check them out down in the description. I'm actually going to give you 10% off if you buy the presets within the next two days. The next part I want to talk about is autofocus. So the AF system is just crazy good. So it is superior to the A7 IV focusing system. We do have AI unit that recognizes the subject. And even if a person is, you know, turned back to me, the camera can still recognize the face and the head. And as soon as the person turns face to me, it follows the eye right away because it estimates where the eye is going to be. And it's just insane. And I have just plenty of ways how I use it. The, the AF system in Sony cameras, I do have to say it, it's quite complex, but very powerful. And if you will learn how to use it, I have actually amazing video. You can check it out after you watch this, how I use the AF system in Sony, but basically I just pick a subject and I track the subject. So photos like this one or like this one, in both situations you might see one little thing. If you look right here to the dimensions, I'm using full RAWs for these pictures. So look at this. This is what I was doing. I was doing a sequence of them throwing a bouquet. This is like a fun thing that I want to play with my couples uh, just to get that one image. So there's like whole sequence but what I actually wanted is just that one image. You know, I just picked the one that is just perfect timing, which is this one, uh, perfect focus. Like everything about this image is amazing. I love it. It's like, it's bizarre as the flowers flying and so on. But yeah, so in order to get this, I'm actually switching to full RAWs because there's one interesting problem that I found afterwards when using Sony A7R5s, when you use medium RAW, you don't get full 10 frames per second. You only get like around seven because you're using a lossless compress and the lossless compress, it doesn't have full 10 frames per second. So in order to get 10 full frames per second, I need to use full raw compressed. So for dynamic situations like this, that I know that I need more frames per second, I'm switching to full raw compressed uh, so I can get like, like a bigger burst of the images. But yeah, the autofocus system, insanely good. Like often I I, I shoot like 51 to uh, like in all the conditions, like raining, sun, backlit, and it's just right there at the eye every single time. Like this is a sequence, they're dancing, they're walking towards me. I'm using 51 to, as you can see at F12, insanely sharp, like right there and for situations at the wedding day like the first dance like people dancing it's just insane to be able to have every single frame in focus even in situations like this 
which at the weddings we get them almost at every wedding people throwing stuff at the couple couple going quite fast actually they're always excited they always go fast and every single frame i have are in focus i showed this on my sony a7 IV review as well moments like this i shoot with dual cameras and one of them i'm holding on in the left hand and a second on the right hand and i'm shooting them both like this I'm looking through only one viewfinder so the second camera is kind of shooting blind and even though I'm using look at this f1.2 aperture I trust the camera that if I focus on a face and I do it before they start walking so where they're like standing at the end of the ceremony spot and they're like moving in I'm going to focus on the bride I'm going to half press and I'm going to keep it like this in one camera and the second camera I'm going to move on top and start shooting and I know that both cameras are going to focus right there when they're supposed to focus so like it's just crazy crazy accurate one last thing that you might wonder is how is the ISO performance so I do reviewed like all of my wedding images and I shot only a couple photos above ISO 6400 mainly because I use prime lenses I use f1.2 as you can see f1.4 so I like I do not often go above 6400 so let's review the images that I want to show you so first one is ISO 3200 not an issue at all beautiful very usable editable colors everything are in place uh, again ISO 3200 this one is with flash like make sure every time you go for higher ISO just make sure you're exposing correctly so if you're using high ISO and underexposing, that might be problematic because then you have to bring out stuff from shadows but if you're exposing correctly so even go for higher ISO just to have properly exposed image then you'll get just a cleaner photo this one also ISO 3200 like at dark not a problem at all here we're moving to a higher territory this is iso 5000 you can see slight more of noise but still properly exposed image gives you like quite clean look i don't mind a noise like this this one is iso 6400 slightly more this was mixed lighting so it was more problematic to edit especially at higher iso but still very clean image um, again ISO 6400 it's a daylight but I had to go for f 5.6 because I wanted everyone to be in focus so you can see the noise but yeah it, it, it doesn't bother me at all and I didn't use any noise removal this is ISO 8000 this is where we're getting to a territory with slightly more noise still very acceptable and the highest I could found is ISO 12800. I'm actually going to reset this so you can see the raw file and how good it is. This is the this is the full raw. This is what you get with ISO 12800 when you expose correctly. I I have no questions. Okay, just a nice image from a 512G Master and a actually mist filter. So if you're looking to soften your images a little bit because you don't want that super harsh look, uh, you want more dreamy look, you can always go with some mist filters and so on. But yeah, this is the images and this is my overall thoughts after using a Sony A7R5 after one year. So if you're thinking about getting these for wedding work, these are amazing. Like you will not be disappointed with these cameras for wedding photography they can get you 61 megapixels if you want they can get you 26 megapixels if you want less you can use the APS-C mode you have beautiful screen beautiful viewfinder so like everything about these cameras is amazing what other options do you have now for wedding photography obviously sony a7 IV which i think will give you 95 percent of what this camera will do in terms of performance there's going to be just some situations that sony a7 r5s will give you like the photo that a7 IV wouldn't give you you know like person turning the back and using that ai unit to recognize the face so th these are certain situations that maybe you will benefit versus a7 IV but other than that it's basically a difference between megapixels 
and how much do you need a screen like this and a viewfinder like this so like a7 IV in my opinion is a still as I said before a go-to camera for like if you're starting out as a wedding photographer or if you just want a modern very good Sony camera let me know down in the comments if you're using Sony a7 R5s and thanks so much for watching I see you very soon bye bye